What's going on, y'all? It's JD Piquel with On3 today on The Hard Count. Are you buying or selling Tennessee at seven and a half wins? Welcome into The Hard Count, the people show for every single thing that you know and that you love about college football. It happens here on a nearly daily basis. Nick Brake is doing the heavy lifting. You can help drive the show at my Twitter page, at JD Piquel. If you're not following me on Twitter, then you missed a poll that we put out the other day. I said, okay, Vegas, the people down there with the casinos and roulette and this, that, and the other, they're saying Tennessee's over-under win total is 7.5. Are you buying that? Are you, are you taking 7.5 wins for Tennessee? And the overwhelming sentiment was, yeah, yeah, we're taking that. We're taking 7.5 wins. We're taking over that. And so... Basically, what I want to do in this video is talk about what does Tennessee have in the cupboard already? What ingredients do they have on this team right now? And then we're going to go at the end of this video, just game by game, win, loss, win, loss, win, loss, tally them all up and tell you what we think and where our money's going when it comes to the Tennessee Volunteers. So starting on offense, they got Hendon Hooker back, who unless you've been living under a rock, you know who Hendon Hooker is, returning quarterback for Tennessee, a dark horse Heisman candidate for a lot of people. He only threw three interceptions against 31 touchdowns a year ago. Really efficient with the football. Did a great job keeping it out of harm's way as Tennessee's offense soared. They were scoring 38 points a game. Anytime you're scoring close to 40 a game, you got a chance to win a lot of football games, and Tennessee did just that. Next, you got Cedric Tillman coming back. 12 touchdowns, over 1,000 yard receiving. He's going to probably pick up a little bit more of the load, if that's possible, since Bayless Jones has left for the NFL. But you also got Brew McCoy, who was at one point in time a really highly touted recruit, transfers from USC to Tennessee. They're going to look to him to also make up for some of that production. And then on top of that, you got your leading rusher back in Jabari Small. So there's a lot of good things trending for Tennessee. One of the hinge position groups for Tennessee that I'm looking at is the offensive line. The good news, you got four or five returning. So you have some continuity there, another year to get on the same page, to sync up. The bad news is Tennessee wasn't great in pass pro last year. Needless to say, you got to keep Hendon Hooker upright. They're going to go as far as Hendon Hooker is allowed to take them, but he can't throw the football if he's laying down. That's a sack. And so last year, they allowed 11% of the dropbacks to end up being sacks. That's really bad, folks. you got to protect the quarterback, especially in the SEC with all of the freak shows you have in the front seven in this conference. Got to be able to protect Hendon Hooker. Next, let's look at the defense. They have a decent front seven. They had 102 tackles for a loss a year ago. That was a school record for Tennessee. I'm looking at the secondary. Because in the secondary last year, they left a lot to be desired. They were last in the SEC in pass yards allowed per game. That's not great. In order to win more than seven and a half games, to get to that eight game mark, you got to be able to defend the pass. Especially with all the quarterbacks in this conference, you got to be able to defend the pass. It's as simple as that. There's not a whole lot of analysis needs to go into it. Just got to be better in the secondary. So if, if they can sure up that secondary... Similar to if they can sure up the offensive line, they're going to be able to get some things started. They're going to be able to rev the engine. But if you can't get some pass pro, and if you can't get some help defending the pass, you got problems. So that's what they have in stock right now at Tennessee. But let's look at the schedule. How does the schedule shape up for Tennessee? Well, we're going to go game by game and give you our thoughts. Game one, Ball State win. Then you go to Pitt. I think that's a win as well. It's going to be an interesting game because it's game two and Pitt's the defending ACC champ and they got all this juice. I think Tennessee's able to win that game. Then you have Akron. I love the Zips. I'm I'm a big Zips guy, but Tennessee's winning that game. Then you have Florida and then a bye and then at LSU. Okay, so Florida at home, a bye week, and then you go to LSU. This is a really interesting stretch to me. Because I don't think that Tennessee is going to drop both these games. If they do, they got problems. But I think they actually will split one of these. For us, I have them losing to Florida and then beating LSU. I'm not sold on what LSU has as a program just yet. We don't know who their quarterback's going to be. I think there's going to be some transition under Brian Kelly. And truthfully, I just trust Anthony Richardson more for Florida. So let's say they lose to Florida, get a bye week, 
get their juice back, get their legs back under them. They beat LSU at LSU. Then they play Alabama. Alabama's Alabama right now. This is not a knock on Tennessee. It'll be a rivalry game. It'll be in Knoxville. It'll be in Neyland Stadium. That'll be a blast. I think that they'll keep it close for at least the first half. They'll they'll play Alabama tough, but I think they end up losing to Alabama. Tennessee Martin, that's a dub. Then they play Kentucky at home. They beat Kentucky at Georgia. Kentucky will be an interesting game. Backtracking a little bit. Kentucky will be an interesting game. I love the fact they have that game at home. Where is Kentucky at this point in the season? Remains to be seen because right now everyone is talking about Will Levis being a first round draft pick. We're not here to discuss that. But with so much pressure on Kentucky heading into the season, what are they looking like past the halfway point? I think the fact they get them at home in itself means they can win that game. I like them to beat Kentucky. And then, like I said, going to Athens to play Georgia, it's tough. It's Georgia. I don't have a whole lot more analysis than that. At this point in the year, we don't know what Georgia's going to be like on defense just yet in terms of how much better or how much worse are they than they were a year ago because a year ago they were like historically good. I think they lose to Georgia. Go back home for Missouri. think they beat Missouri at South Carolina. Could be tricky. Remains to be seen how much Spencer Rattler is able to progress and come into his own this coming year, but I think they actually win that game, and then they beat Vanderbilt at home to finish the year. So for us, I have them at eight, an optimistic nine, if you want to talk about the South Carolina Carolina game being a win. I think Tennessee's very much good for seven and a half wins. I am buying that. I am very much buying seven and a half wins for Tennessee. So let us know in the comment section below if you disagree or what games you think that Tennessee could potentially steal. Tell me if you think they're going to beat Georgia. Tell me if you think they're going to beat Alabama. Maybe you think they're beating both Florida and LSU. I don't know. But let's talk about it because that's what makes this fun. Appreciate you tuning in. That's it for us here on The Hard Count. Subscribe to the channel. Follow me on Twitter at JD Pakel to stay with every single thing that we're doing here. We want you a part of it. We're going to keep the party rolling, and we will see y'all next time. Hey, y'all. Thanks so much for watching. Subscribe to the channel here to make sure you don't miss an episode of The Hard Count. Also, be sure to check out other videos on the On3 YouTube channel.